The NVIDIA GTX 1080 launched over two years ago on May 27th, 2016. I know this because I remember being there that day, lining up at 5 o'clock in the morning with over a hundred other nerds that were just waiting to get their hands on the brand new flagship Pascal card from NVIDIA. However, there were only 20 cards in stock that day, and many of us went home empty-handed, but thankfully, being the second person in line, I was able to get my hands on the GTX 1080, and I've had the same one ever since then, a Founder's Edition card that I paid a little over $600 for, with taxes included. Since that time, we've seen a price drop down to $499, which has been very difficult to see fulfilled because of pricing that has risen because of GPU mining and shortages of RAM and the like. But now today you can actually find quite a few variants available for under $500 if you go ahead and look over on Amazon. So with the GTX 1080 out now for over two years and the GTX 1180 likely right around the corner, if the current rumors are to be believed, how does the GTX 1080 hold up today in modern games running at 1080p, 1440p, as well as 4K? That is the question that I hope to answer here today for people that are maybe in the market looking at the GTX 1080 right now or deciding whether or not they want to wait for the 1180 to come out or maybe even picking up a used GTX 1080 once the new cards do come out as you can probably expect to see them at a decent discount once that does happen. So hopefully this can answer that for you. As I said, we're going to be benchmarking 10 games here, games that have come out since the 1080 came out all the way up until now, really games that have come out in 2018 like Far Cry 5. All the games that I'm testing here, I did test at high settings. I did that because of reasons that I've explained in the past in a video called high versus ultra settings and why I believe it's a little bit more realistic benchmarking games at high settings instead of ultra. If you want to go ahead and catch up on that video, I'll have it up linked up in a card up here in the top corner, but it's one of the most popular videos I've done on the channel of all time, honestly. And if you haven't checked out that video yet, I definitely recommend going back and taking a look at it. The system that I'm benchmarking with here is running a Ryzen 2700 CPU, so that's an 8-core, 16-threaded AMD CPU. I do have that overclocked up to 4 gigahertz. As far as the GTX 1080 Founders card is concerned, I do have the power limit increased on that, and I'm also running that overclocked. It runs at around 2 gigahertz on the core, roughly, depending on the game. Some games will vary a little bit as to the exact clock speed. But for the most part, it's running at plus 200 megahertz on the core and 300 megahertz on the memory. So that was clock speeds that I used for all of my testing for the CPU as well as the graphics card. Nothing changed there. I am running 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is at 3200 megahertz, which is important when testing with a Ryzen CPU. You want to have good fast RAM with good timing. So that's what we're using here today. I am also using the latest driver from NVIDIA, which is 398.36. When the GTX 1080 came out, it was widely considered to be overkill for 1080p resolution and it was really kind of the sweet spot card for running games at 1440p. I know when I first got mine, I was playing at 1440p, 144Hz, and there was not a game that I could not play that was just completely getting crushed by the GTX 1080. It was a perfect card, and I only upgraded to the 1080 Ti once that came out, and that's when I began gaming at ultra-wide resolution of 3440 by 1440. Now, when the card first came out, it was struggling in a lot of games at 4K, depending on certain titles. If you were playing less demanding games like CSGO, Dota 2, uh, League of Legends, or Overwatch, then certainly you can certainly play those games maxed out 4K 60 FPS without an issue, and the games have actually gotten tougher to run since the GTX 1080 come out, but it's still able to actually hang in there pretty well at 4K, as you'll be seeing in the benchmarks here in just a couple of minutes. I'll go ahead and play through some side-by-side -side comparisons here on some of the benchmarks that I ran so that you can see 1080p side-by-side -side with 1440p and how taxing it is on the GTX 1080 and just how well it's still handling a lot of these games here in 2018. Looking first at Rainbow Six Siege, this is probably the game that I play more than anything right now, and it's a game that actually came back all the way back in 2015, but it's continued to get better, it's continued to get better optimization from Ubisoft, and you could see that here as at 
at 1080p, it actually ended up averaging 185 FPS, while at 1440p, it got an average of 123 frames per second. And even when I benchmarked it at 4K, it still had an average over 60 frames per second. So a very well optimized title, which is actually the case in most of the games that I tested here, certainly not all of them. Something like Assassin's Creed Origins was actually very difficult to run uh, at 4K. It was, it was stable. You're gonna get between 40 and 60 FPS in most circumstances, but I would say at that point you're really relying on having uh, something like a G-Sync monitor in order to be able to handle all of the different varying refresh rates in that, but 1080p and 1440p, definitely easily runnable. Far Cry 5, that's a game that just came out here this year, and 1080p and 1440p there as well, able to completely ha handle this game, 1440p no problem whatsoever at high settings. Although once you, we do get into the graphs, you'll see at 4K, it actually did drop down below 60 FPS. So still able to handle most of these games here at 1080 and 1440p. Let's go ahead and throw up the graph now with the average FPS, and then we will get into the 1% low so you can get a picture of the low side of things when we are seeing the frames starting to come down a bit from their higher FPS. So looking across here, as I said, Assassin's Creed Origin was... I would say probably the most taxing game that I tested besides The Witcher 3. Both of those were very taxing, although The Witcher 3, I would say, is a better optimized title. With Assassin's Creed Origins at 1080p, we got an average of 89 FPS, while at 1440p, it got 70, and then at 4K, it came all the way down to 46 FPS. And there was only a handful of titles here with averages below 60, even at 4K. Those games being Far Cry 5, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Witcher 3. So those were the most taxing games that I tested along with Assassin's Creed Origins, where at 4K, you are going to struggle quite a bit. But as you can see in the rest of the graph, 1080p and 1440p is not going to be an issue. In fact, in I believe almost every game here besides, yeah, every game besides Assassin's Creed Origins, we're getting an average over 100 FPS at 1080p. And even so, in 1440p, in the, in the majority of games, we're getting an average of over 100 FPS, which should really tell you that the GTX 1080 is still very good if you're looking to get something like a 1440p 144Hz monitor. Although I know some people think that you need to get a solid 144 frames per second to take advantage of that. That's really just not the case. So you're getting the high refresh rate, but you definitely don't need to be hitting 144 all the time, especially if you're getting a monitor with G-Sync or FreeSync, it's really meant to have the frame rate fluctuating. You're not going to sit at a solid 144 FPS all of the time. It doesn't matter what game that you happen to be running, it's still going to be, be varying quite a bit. And even at 1080p, you're going to see games dip down below 144 FPS. So 1080p uh, still is sort of overkill if you're looking to play games at high settings. Although if you're getting a GTX 1080 for 1080p, you should be maxing games out and probably even bumping up the anti-aliasing to help smooth out some of those edges. But 1440p, it could certainly handle all of these games at high settings, and many of them, it can handle them at ultra settings as well without breaking a sweat. And then you really don't need to crank up the anti-aliasing that much either when you're talking about gaming at 1440p versus 1080p. Obviously, 4K, you virtually need zero anti-aliasing, but it is going to be a lot more demanding depending on the game that you are playing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 1% low now so you can get an idea of the games when they are dropping down a little bit in their frames. And you can see only two of the games at 1440p had 1% lows below 60 FPS, those being The Witcher 3, which had 1440p come down to 58 FPS, while Assassin's Creed Origins was 46, which is just not the most optimized title that Ubisoft has done in recent years, if I'm being perfectly honest. The Witcher 3, on the other hand, it is just a taxing game. I do believe it's very well optimized. It doesn't really cane your VRAM all that much. It's just a gorgeous looking game. There's a lot of detail in it and open world and everything like that. So yeah, it's a, it's a taxing game, but it is a well optimized game, unlike Assassin's Creed Origins, I would say. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda is kind of another one of those games where it's not particularly well optimized. That had a 1% low down at 42 FPS at 4K, but you know, as I was saying before, 1440p is kind of the sweet spot for this card. You could pair that really well with a 144Hz display, and you could see uh, on the 1% lows, there's only a couple games here coming down below 60. Like I said, Assassin's Creed Origin, The Witcher 3, Sniper Elite 4, Shadow Warrior 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Prey, Overwatch, and games like Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege is going to be really important to be getting 
that you know 144 fps or as close to it as possible you definitely want to stay above 60 as you need those lightning fast reaction times when you're in those you know in combat with other players so having that frame rate up above 60 is going to be crucial in competitive fps games like that as you can see in any of the competitive games here that i tested 1440p not an issue so at this point in time where we are right now today i'm recording this video on july 26th 2018 would i recommend going out and picking up a GTX 1080 right now? Probably not, but that's only because the rumors are telling us that the 1180s are right around the corner. And I have to assume once those are available, we'll probably see price drops on the GTX 1080, especially in the used market. So you really have that to look forward to. And if you are deciding to go for higher resolution, that's really kind of the only main reason to wait for the 1180 to come out. And then the 1170, I think is probably going to be the killer GPU in that entire lineup. Some of the rumors are saying it's going to beat the 1080 Ti, which is very likely that that could happen. We saw that with the 980 Ti, that pretty much competes head to head with the GTX 1070. When that card came out, it was almost $700. So if you can see the 1170 coming out for 400, let's say 400 to $450, and you're talking about getting GTX 1080 Ti performance, it's almost more so wa worth waiting for the GTX 1170 than it is worth waiting for the GTX 1180, which is probably going to be a hell of a lot faster than the GTX 1080 right now. And once those do come out, you'll see these prices down come, come down a fair bit on the GTX 1080. So that's kind of what I would be waiting for. But hopefully this also shows people that maybe already own GTX 1080s that their cards are still doing fantastic and they don't need to be sitting there on the buy button day one, especially if you're still gaming on a 1440p monitor. I mean, unless you're planning to make that jump to a 4K display or ultra wide 3440 by 1440, that's really the only reason you should feel the need to upgrade to something like the GTX 1180 once those become out. But even the 1170, I think, is going to be really killer with the performance it should offer if it's at 1080 Ti level of performance for under $500. Now, a lot of that is obviously built on speculation. We don't know exactly when these are going to come out. We don't know the exact performance that we're going to see in these cards, but it's certainly worth waiting for, at least at this point in time. Some rumors say July 30th. Others have said August 30th. We just have nothing validated right now, but I will keep you guys updated on the channel as we do get more information about the new 11 series once they are becoming available and we have updates on it and everything. So make sure you are subscribed for that content. I'll have reviews on those, hopefully when they do come out hopefully fingers crossed on that one if nvidia wants to send me some cards and uh yeah hopefully we'll get to see what they can do here in hopefully just a few weeks from now honestly so i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here guys please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the two year later testing of the gtx 1080 if you'd like to see me go back and test any other cards from the past few years let me know down there as well and i'll try to do as many of them as I possibly can with the cards that I have on hand. So let me know, and uh, yeah, we'll discuss it as always. Don't forget to stick a like on this video, subscribe if you're not already, and you can always ring the notification bell if you've been here for a while and you never want to miss a moment of content on the channel. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Terra.